Hey guys, in today's uh, video, let's go ahead and see if we can build a low poly version of this uh, screenshot, this reference that I'm using. This is just a screenshot from a game. Um, and this would be a fun little exercise to maybe attempt to build a cute little robot that's similar to this, but maybe not exact, but this will give us a good uh, reference to what we can shoot for. Um, so here I am in Maya 2020. So to get started, uh, let's go ahead and grab a cube, go to mesh and smooth, and that will give us something like this, which is a perfect uh, place for to start as our body. Next, let's, uh, let's extrude kind of this panel here. Um, or maybe we can work on this little thing here. So to do that, I can actually move this a little higher so my grid doesn't is not on my way. So let's move this a little. And for the circle here, right, I'm thinking of maybe let's use this whole thing here to our advantage. So holding down the shift key, I can simply click on each polygon. And that will work. If we want to make this more round, we could click on this button here. And that will make it a little more round. And I actually kind of like that. So we could move this in if we wanted to. And now to actually kind of push this in so it looks like it's pushed in, let's go ahead and click on bevel. I mean uh, extrude. And I'm click. I'm gonna click on my scale, and just gonna scale this in, like something like that, and just push this in. Now, if I'm pushing it in, you see it's creating sort of this really sharp edge, which uh, could be a good thing. But looking here, it looks like there's like a little bevel here, so it's not quite as sharp. And let's see if we can maybe fix that. So I'm gonna double click on this edge. And when I double click on it, it selects the whole uh, loop. And now what we could do is come here and click on this little button called bevel. And if we adjust, adjust the uh, fraction, you could see we can control the bevel of our edge. So at point two uh, on my screen, this makes sense. And that looks pretty good, actually. I kind of like that. Now, if you wanted to, um, if you look at the geometry, you could see that when our cube was created, it kind of created these lines that don't look um, very straight. Let's double click on one, grab our scale tool, and just very slowly kind of straighten them out. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just, I kind of want it straighter. And let's do the same thing here and maybe here. I think that is better for our uh, robot. Just kind of a manual adjusting couple points. Now this thing here inside is probably uh, going to be done in Substance Painter as a texture or even Photoshop, right? To draw this kind of element inside. But if we wanted to, we could uh, push this out a little just like we did uh, with this. So let's select these points and say, create a sphere or uh, or uh, circularize that was a mouthful and now if I'm looking at it it doesn't look straight to me so if I press spacebar and go in my uh, front view here I can actually manually maybe make this just a little straighter so it looks a little nicer Press spacebar, go back in my perspective view. And now what I'm gonna do is press extrude. And this time I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit. Grab my scale, push this in. And I know it doesn't really look like that here, but I'm just kind of adding my own little spin on this. And now I'm gonna, let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll grab these uh, edges. Now, when I double click on it, they're not being selected. So I have to manually go in and select the rest of them. 
and then just say uh, bevel. And that to me looks nice and robot robotic. So this kind of makes a cool uh, piece as far as I was thinking. All right, so now since we have this cool uh, little shape, let's uh, see what we could do next. So next, let's go ahead and ex uh, extract this panel up here. So this is uh, looks simple enough. Let's just simply grab all of these points, holding down the shift key and just simply clicking. I can cl click uh, extrude and just push this out. So that looks uh, that looks nice. I can grab maybe this edge, this edge, and this. And let's go ahead and if we can just grab our scale tool and just kind of scale these in and push them up. And the reason I did that is because I could see that this is a little more round, so it's not so uh, square. So that's maybe a good way to do it. Obviously, uh, this is also doesn't look as uh, sharp here. So this is a little too, maybe too sharp. So we could fix that by double clicking on this edge if we wanted to, and just simply click uh, bevel and adjust the fraction. So maybe, maybe it's more like that. So this looks, uh, this looks pretty good. All right, let's work on the little uh, face on top. So the face on top, we can do, do it a couple different ways. We can extrude it from this geometry, or we can actually create another box and just place it on top. So maybe let's do that. I'm going to click on this um, shape and you can see it's highlighted in my outliner and I can press H to hide it. And once you hit it, you can see that it's actually not selected. To bring it back, you just click on it again and press H. So that will hide it and unhide it. So at this point, uh, what I'm looking for is something like this. So let's grab another box. Maybe make it just a little bit larger. And let's shape it to what we think the head uh, should look like. We can go to the side and grab all of these edges all at once. We can click bevel. And that's I'm looking for this shape here. So you got a line and you got a bevel and then this part is kind of more round, right? And you can see how it's tapered in and uh, it's a little tapered out um, on the bottom. So it's a little more cartoony. So let's do that. Let's grab our all of these points here, grab our scale tool and just kind of scale it to the side. Maybe something like that. And I can also see there's a little line there, right? So I don't have any uh, geometry for that to create kind of this indentation there by his chin. So let's go ahead and insert some geometry. I'm going to, uh, let's do a few things. First, I'd like to do is grab this uh, edge all the way around here and also on the back of him. something like that. If you're always looking for the front of the model, you know that Z axis is going to be your front. So this is the front and let's go ahead and bevel it. So something like that is good. Now what I need to do is right click, go to object mode. When the lines are green, you know, you're in object mode. And then when you switch to edit, um, you can edit the points, but then when you're done, make sure you go to the object mode to kind of exit the editing. So now um, if I select my object and go to mesh tools, I can click on something called insert edge loop. And if I click on this option box, I can say um, 
multiple and let's go ahead and set it to two and now if i click on the middle you can see what it does it's creating like the split right and th that's really nice but i'm thinking i think i would like it to be um all the way through to the entire mesh not just on one side so if i click on this one you could see it's doing it there so one way i could do it is just do something like that on both the bottom and the top and then what i could do is i can actually switch to my point mode grab my slice tool and just simply con collect connect these lines press enter so you click once and then click so that's let's do the same thing on the other end so you can see the point turns red when you're in the right place all right so this what this did is it actually created some extra geometry for us so now we can move the points to make this indentation and what it also did is it created a face that has more than four points so we have one two three four five and six and actually that is not something you want to do in the game model so that's going to be uh, something we need to fix so let's fix it right now so we don't forget about it so let's create a line here and let's create a line here now you can see this face has um, four sides you really don't want to have any faces with more than four sides because some game engines will actually not render that well and uh, it's just good practice not to have any faces that have more than four sides when you're building a model a game model and at any point if you actually wanted to test this automatically you could go to mesh and go to cleanup and then cleanup you can actually say uh, select matching polygons so tell Maya don't do anything just select them for you and then if you say um, faces with more than four sides right as long as this is checked you could say uh, apply and that will look at the model and tell you if anything has more than four sides so to test that I can actually delete this line here and now I'll show you if I uh, run this you see how this is selected right so Maya is telling me hey this is a problem so this is very useful so I'm gonna close that and undo what I've done because I want this line back all right let's go ahead and click on our first um, shape and just press H to unhide it I'm gonna grab my second shape and kind of pull this up so you can decide what size you want maybe make it a little larger so that looks really cool um, let's go ahead and select all of these faces and click extrude and just push them in click on this uh, blue box at the end and kind of push this in a little more and uh, that looks really nice I think I'm not gonna do anything in the back I think um, any detail that we decide to add like panels and things on the back we can do that in substance painter with uh, normal maps right so we don't really need actual geometry to create I see some lines here so um, any kind of detail even these rings here we can actually create that with a normal map if we wanted to if we wanted to keep this uh, really nice and simple and clean now this is a personal preference but if you uh, zoom in you could see in Maya some of the lines are kind of jaggedy um, you could go to go to render and click on this option box and then here uh, if you look at these lines carefully I don't know if you could see it 
in the video, but if I say smooth, this line actually straightens out. And if I click on this one, it makes it even lighter. So I actually like it dark, but I do want it smooth. I don't want it um, jaggedy. And then I can also turn on the ambient occlusion and it creates kind of a nice shadow, just a little nicer to look at. So keep that in mind if you uh, want to. All right, so now let's just simply create a little uh, cylinder for our neck. So that's going to be easy enough. Let's click on this guy here and just simply move him up and scale him in. So something like that uh, should work. Now, if this is a game model and you want the neck to be moving, you're obviously going to need more geometry for bending because right now there's there's no edge loops to create any kind of bend, right? So also, I don't really know how well this is centered inside the mesh. So I could click on this uh, X-ray button and kind of take a look. Maybe I could make this a little longer to make sure it's going inside the geometry. Now, another obvious thing is I don't need all of these polygons. If it's a game model, you don't want to have all these extra uh, draw calls creating um, all these faces that are not being used because they're hidden inside another object. So let's go ahead and turn off X-Ray. And while this is selected, let's click on this button here, isolate the cylinder and going in our um, attribute editor, we could go to poly cylinder and actually um, turn off the um, the top and the bottom so we can change the caps or um, and we do need subdivision so let's create more height and maybe we don't need 24 for our uh, actual sides maybe that's a little too much I want to really keep it kind of a low poly model so I'm gonna go with 12 and as far as the bending goes I think I'm going to go with five. To me, that feels pretty good. I think I like that. So now what we could do is right click and just simply click here and here and press delete. All right. Now let's go ahead and click on this button again. So now we have this nice neck, just like in the reference, right? So that works very nicely. Now he has these two little side uh, jets that kind of keep him in the air, right? So to do that, let's go ahead and grab a box one more time, move it to the side. I'm going to, um... all right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is do the same thing. I'm gonna grab my mesh and smooth it. And let's go ahead and make it larger. All right, and now let's kind of put it in position. So let's think of this as our uh, jet. All right, like a side jet thing. So what I would like to do is actually, I know in the reference image, it looks like um, it's kind of uh, closed off on the bottom. I would actually like to make mine to, to be more like a airplane jet so there's like a some sort of a opening in the bottom maybe a cool particle effects can fly out and the game engine like unreal or unity would be a really easy way to create particles and so for that to happen let's give them like a little opening there so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select let's select uh these faces here and if I hold on the shift key and then click period on my keyboard, I can kind of grow my selection. And I'm gonna grow it all the way up to kind of this point here. Grab my scale tool and just flatten this out. And you can see it starts to look almost like a jet-like shape. Now if I move this down and maybe scale it in a little, We can scale it out or in. I'm trying to figure out what actually would work uh, 
better. So maybe to kind of mimic what's going on there, uh, I could grab all of these points and just kind of scale them in. And that's kind of cool. Um, maybe it's a little too much. And then if we wanted to, we could, um, we could go and insert a few edges and see what that looks like. Maybe let's give ourselves like four edges. And if I click on these, go to scale, turn my, my turn on my soft selection and maybe just puff this up a little, try, try and create something more interesting than just a basic shape. Yeah. So there's like a little cartoony, Um, effect going on, right? So a little more bubbly. So maybe something like that. Maybe scale this down. So this is what I was envisioning as far as what I think would look uh, really cool. Now let's go to faces and we can turn the grid off so it's not on our way and just let's also, so turn off the soft selection. Let's just grab uh, all of these guys here. And I'm going to use this as the thickness, right, of the jet. So uh, just like before, we can make this round if we wanted to. Then we can also press extrude and grab our move tool and just kind of push this up. Go to scale scale this down. If you want to see how that fits in there again, remember you can press x-ray, you can see what that looks like. So I think that looks uh, really cool. If we wanted some additional detail, we could just look, click on uh, all of these faces and maybe extrude them. We could kind of scale them in, just make it even more uh, interesting. Grab scale, maybe do something like that. Maybe uh, in Substance Painter, this part could also be, could also be glowing. Uh, so you have the middle glowing, the eyes could be glowing, and then the jet thing could be glowing in addition to shooting particles. Just kind of you know having fun, trying to imagine what would be a fun uh, possibility, right? Okay, so I think that looks uh, really cool. Um, I would like my jet to be just a little larger. That looks pretty good. Let's go on the side and maybe move this up, something like this. Now we could uh, press Control D and create one another one on this side. Or if we want to make sure that it's exactly same distance, we could also go to mesh and just click mirror. And this way we know it's exactly the same distance, right? Let's grab our uh, neck and press control D and move it aside. Maybe make it smaller, maybe drag it a little longer and Now, if we just simply rotate it, kind of put it in position of where I don't want it to be where the light would be, right? So it would be part of this body. Uh, and I want to make sure it's on the angle. So I think, let's see what that looks like. I think that feels pretty, uh, pretty good. Again, select this, go to mesh and do a mirror. All right, so now we have two. And I'm pretty happy with this. Um, you can, of course, play around and make it, you know, add your own little detail here and there. Uh, I feel like the neck is too thick for some reason. And I really want to make sure that the edges of, of uh, the neck really go inside the mesh further up. Because if you're going to set up joints and begin to bend things, you want to make sure that... Um, you know, some of this geometry doesn't pop out when you 
bend the joint. So you really want to make sure the mesh goes in enough, right? To kind of give us that uh, freedom. But either way, I feel like the neck is too, it needs to be thinner. So he's a little more, I guess this works. Um, and then uh, remember we added this extra geometry, but we never actually bend, created the bend. So let's go ahead and select just maybe this face and these faces and go to our move tool and our self selection is still on so I can increase it just a little bit and maybe bend it something like that of course I'm gonna adjust the neck in a minute maybe we can grab this guy and just pull him up it's a little more interesting go to object mode and let's go ahead and move this down maybe a little more so I'm pretty happy with how this looks all right so we're in our next video uh, we can take the time to um, unwrap this character and set up UVs so we can bring him into Substance Painter and create some of these other uh, cool details like these little panels and the glowing effect and all of that. So um, before we uh, finish, I'm looking at my character and I can't help myself, but let's add a little connector here. I feel like it would be cool if the neck was maybe connected besides just a simple tube, maybe something like that uh, looks kind of cool. And one other thing I would like to do is let's just do, um, let's actually grab this and this by holding the shift key. You can connect them by clicking this button here. So now it's one shape. Now, if I select these faces here, I can make that line a little thinner and I'm going to press extrude and press this in just a little bit and then scale and move it up. And again, I'm just adding just a little more detail so it's not uh it's simple but it's not too simple and i think that would be another cool little uh, glowing power energy thing inside there as well all right so thanks for watching uh please subscribe and we'll uh do more uh cool stuff in uh, in the next video all right thanks